Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Break Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 11th of May. Heat wave intensifies in parts of India. Rains hit eastern coast due to cyclone Asani. Sri Lankan president warns of racial tensions amid economic crisis. Troops patrol streets. Curfew extended. And. Silence period begins for local polls in Nepal, scheduled for May 30. And now for all the details. With temperatures hovering past 40 degrees Celsius in many parts of northern and central India on Wednesday, people face difficulties in carrying out their daily activities. Meanwhile, rains continue to batter eastern coastal states due to cyclone Asani, which was expected to weaken into a depression by Thursday. People across parts of northern, central and northwestern India on Wednesday consumed juices and other fluids and protected themselves with clothes as they reeled under soaring temperatures due to the intensifying heat wave. India this year has witnessed record shattering early summer, which environmentalists say could be an impact of climate change. The sudden spike in temperature in many states has constrained locals to stay indoors or seek refuge in the shade. The maximum temperature in capital New Delhi also hovered at 40 degrees Celsius on Wednesday. IMD, the India Meteorological Department said, a heat wave spell is likely to start on Friday in New Delhi. While heat wave conditions will persist in other parts of the country till May 15. In fact, online online था तब तक तो ठीक था लेकिन अब जैसे offline हुआ है तो उसकी वजह से इतना travel करना पड़ता है और metro में AC और एकदम से बाहर निकलो तो यहाँ पे तो उसकी वजह से ऐसा एकदम से सब change हो जाता है तो उसकी वजह से काफी खासी जुखाम भी हो जाता है. Meanwhile, heavy rains lashed India's eastern coastal states due to the impact of the cyclone Asani. The cyclonic storm had weakened weather officials said. But a red warning persisted over southeastern Andhra Pradesh state as it moved close to its coast till afternoon. The weather department said the cyclone was however unlikely to make landfall and expected to gradually weaken into a depression by May 12. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajpaksa has urged citizens to reject what he called attempts to form in racial and religious disharmony following violent clashes in recent days over his government's handling of a devastating economic crisis. Soldiers and armoured personnel carriers patrolled the streets of capital Colombo on Wednesday as the government extended a nationwide curfew by a day. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa urged citizens on Wednesday to reject what he called attempts to form a racial and religious disharmony as clashes broke out in many areas over the government's handling of a devastating economic crisis. This is the time for all Sri Lankans to join hands as one to overcome the economic, social and political challenges, Rajpaksa said on Twitter. Soldiers in armoured personnel carriers patrolled the streets of Colombo on Wednesday as the Sri Lankan government extended a nationwide curfew by a day following the clashes. Troops have been ordered to shoot at anyone damaging public property or threatening lives with eight people killed and over 200 injured in violent street protests this week. But even the resignation of President Gotabaya Rajpaksa's elder brother Mahinda Rajpaksa as Prime Minister and a curfew have failed to defuse public anger. Several cabinet ministers' homes and Mahinda Rajpaksa's residence in Kurunegala city were set on fire. Leftist opposition party People's Liberation Front held Rajpaksa's responsible for the clashes. The International Monetary Fund IMF expressed concern about the violence but said it would continue technical talks that began on Monday with Sri Lankan officials so as to be fully prepared for policy decisions once a new government has been formed. 
President Gotabaya plans to meet opposition politicians within days in expectation of forming a new government. Meanwhile, India said it was fully supportive of Sri Lanka's democracy, stability and economic recovery, but denied that it planned to send troops to restore order. Amid allegations of mudslinging Pakistan's powerful military, PTI Chairman Imran Khan on Tuesday claimed that his party and the country's armed forces were two things keeping Pakistan together. Addressing a massive rally in Chelam, he blamed PM Shahbaz Sharif of betraying the country by conspiring with the US to oust him as the Premier. Pakistan's former Prime Minister and PTI Party Chairman Imran Khan said on Tuesday his party and the country's armed forces were the two things keeping Pakistan together. As he lashed out at Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif for blaming him of speaking ill against the state institutions. Addressing a massive rally of supporters in Jhelum, Khan referred Shehbaz as Mir Jafar and once again aired allegations of the US conspiring with leaders of the incumbent government to oust him in a no-confidence vote in April. He said just as the British had awarded Mir Jafar for his betrayal to the Mughal forces, similarly the Americans have rewarded Sharif and installed him as the Premier. जो मुगलों का गवर्नर था जब अंग्रेजों के खिलाफ वो लड़ा था मीर जाफर ने उससे गद्दारी की और फिर अंग्रेजों ने मीर जाफर को ऊपर बिठाया जिस तरह अमेरिकनों ने शबाज शरीफ को ऊपर बिठाया तुम हो मीर जाफर The PTI chairman also lashed out at Shehbaz Sharif's visit to London to hold a meeting with his elder brother PMLN party supremo Nawaz Sharif Khan said Nawaz a corruption case convict is an absconder and Shehbaz will be taking his federal cabinet to take orders from a thief Meanwhile the US State Department spokesperson on Tuesday once again spurned Imran Khan's allegations regarding his ouster terming it as a propaganda misinformation and lies Moving on Locals and hotel owners in Ghizar Valley of Gilgit Baltistan have lamented the tourism sector in the region is suffering badly due to dilapidated roads, poor connectivity and lack of other facilities. They blame the Pakistan government has left all sections of the society at their own mercy. Locals and hoteliers in Giza district of Gilgit Baltistan have claimed that the tourism industry in the valley has been facing a severe crisis due to the government's apathy to develop road transport and other basic infrastructure in the illegally occupied region. Recently an association of hotel owners held a seminar with deputy commissioner for the implementation of the hotel industries act and demanded amenities to boost tourism which is the backbone of the economy of the region the tourism sector has seen a steep decline especially after the covid-19 pandemic hit and locals have decried negligence by authorities इन यहाँ के जो मुकामी जो होटल होटल इंडस्ट्रीज वाले हैं उनका यही कहना है कि उन्हें भी सॉफ्ट लोन प्रोवाइड की जाए ताकि वो अपने कारोबार को और भी जिद्दत दे सके पीटीडीसी होटल्स के हवाले से क्या अच्छा पीटीडीसी होटल्स पिछले चार सालों से बंद पड़े हैं अभी गिजर में दो पीटीडीसी होटल्स है एक गुपिस में और एक इधर खलती साइड में है सॉरी और एक फंडर में तो इस वक्त दोनों पीटीडीसी होटल्स बंद पड़े हैं जिसकी वजह से आने वाले सियाहों को बहुत मुश्किल का सामने है Locals claim politicians make hollow promises to bring about development only during the time of elections. The Pakistani establishment's indifferent attitude has affected all sections of the society struggling with the economic fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. The United Nations Security Council will meet on Thursday to discuss an order by Afghanistan's Taliban for women to cover their faces in public. A return to a signature policy of the Islamist group's past hardline rule. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Linda Thomas Greenfield, in a reaction to the Islamic Emirates' new ruling, said, "What they did is unconscionable 
and will be judged by their actions, not their words. Reacting to the Islamic Emirates face scarf decree on Afghan women, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Linda Thomas Greenfield said what they did is unconscionable. Greenfield said that Afghanistan's Taliban will be judged by their actions, not their words. The Taliban last Saturday ordered women to cover their faces in public, a return to a signature policy of their past hardline rule and an escalation of restrictions that are causing anger at home and abroad. The United Nations Security Council will meet on Thursday to discuss the issue. UN Special Envoy for Afghanistan, Deborah Lyons, is due to brief the 15-member council, said Norway's UN mission, which requested the closed-door meeting to address the increased restrictions on human rights and freedoms of girls and women. Under the Taliban's previous rule from 1996 to 2001, women had to cover up, could not work and girls were banned from school. But after seizing power in August, they vowed to respect women's rights. However, in March, the Taliban backtracked on their announcement that high schools would open for girls, saying they would remain closed until a plan was drawn up in accordance with Islamic law for them to reopen. Then on Saturday, the group's supreme leader, Habatullah Akhundzada, said that if a woman did not cover her face outside home, her father or closest male relative would be visited and face potential prison or firing from the state jobs. Moving on to news from Nepal, the silence period for the local level elections being held on May 13 in a single phase for 753 local units including the rural municipalities, urban municipalities, sub-metropolitan cities and metropolitan cities has come into effect. The rules corresponding to the do's and don'ts for the polls began from Tuesday midnight. The election commission in a notice said that during the silence period, campaigns and publicity, including discussions, mass gatherings, interactions, among other election-related actions, will be forbidden. This is the second local body election in Nepal under the new constitution. Last local elections were held in 2017 in three phases. As many as 35,221 representatives will be elected in the upcoming polls. Nepal, a landlocked country, shares boundaries with India and China, has shut all international border crossings from May 10. The sale of liquor has also been prohibited to ensure a free, fair and fearless environment for voting. During the election day, all domestic flight services, except rescue and relief flights and flights taking off under government directives, will be halted. Sufism has been guiding the life of Kashmiris for centuries. Even today, the teachings of Sufi saints reverberate in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory and continue to inspire people to live in peace and harmony. Keeping the rich tradition alive, Sufi saint disciples and folk artists perform Dambali dance with full joy and enthusiasm. An enthralled people at the famous shrine of 19th century Kashmiri Sufi mystic poet and saint Abdul Wahab Khan on Tuesday. Keeping the tradition alive, disciples of Sufi Saint Abdul Wahab Khan and folk artist in Pulwama district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory performed Sufi dance Dambali on Tuesday. The event organized by the members of Baba Sakur Dambali Center at famous shrine of 19th century Kashmiri Sufi mystic poet and saint Abdul Wahab Khan enthralled people who had gathered to witness the traditional dance form. Men dressed in traditional attires were seen dancing to the drum beats as people from across the city watched them performing with full joy and enthusiasm. Here, program ये संगीत नाटक एकेडमी की वसादत से यहां हुआ ये दंबाली प्रोग्राम यहां बहुत लोग आए हैं ये खुश है क्योंकि लोगों को इस दंबाली के साथ बहुत लगाव है Every year Dambali artists perform the dance at various shrines of different Sufi saints on special religious occasions to seek their divine blessings and reaffirm their centuries old tradition of Kashmir Sufism has been guiding the life of Kashmiris for nearly 700 years even today, the teachings of Sufi saints reverberate in every nook and corner of Kashmir Valley and continue to inspire people to live in peace and harmony. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. 
Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.